One of the comments I get fairly regularly on this channel is asking, why do I care so much about emissions? Because CO2 is plant food. We need more of it, not less. So I thought I'd record a short video about this. The truth of that statement uh, to some extent and why it's a bit, really a lot misleading. And as with many things in life, there can be too much of a good thing. Too much wine can lead to a day of regret. Too much sun, dehydration and sunburn. Too much money, well, lots of things. And too much CO2 is no different. We need some in our atmosphere, but too much, and particularly changing the concentrations of it quickly, risks disaster. So let's get into some, some of the detail. So first, what do I mean when I talk about uh, reducing emissions or that phrase decarbonisation? I had one comment that asked why I'm trying to get rid of CO2 because we need it to, to grow plants and food. And if we didn't have it, we'd all die. And yes, absolutely, the ecosystem needs to have a level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to help facilitate photosynthesis. But when I talk about decarbonisation, I'm saying we need to stop adding more CO2 into that system, not get rid of it completely. So what do I mean by that? What's the context there? Well, in 2023, through the burning of fossil fuels, the human race released 37 billion tonnes of CO2. That's the highest humans have ever been responsible for. We don't have data for 2024 yet, as I record this, but emissions may have risen even further. These emissions mean that the concentration of CO2 has increased from around 350 molecules of CO2 per million molecules of air when I was born to over 425 molecules this year. If we go back even further to before the Industrial Revolution and we look at CO2 concentrations historically, we can see that for thousands of years, the CO2 concentration was less than 280 parts per million. So, in less than 40 years, we've increased the concentration of CO2 by 21%. If we go back 200 years, we've increased it by 50%. So in efforts to decarbonize, uh, to reduce emissions, or meet, trying to meet net zero, what we're trying to do is we're trying to stop this increase in the CO2 concentration. We're trying to stop making things worse. And here's the key point, making things worse. And um, what do I mean by that? Surely higher CO2 concentrations is more food for plants, um, we're helping them grow, we're giving them life, we're ensuring they can thrive and thrive and thrive and thrive. Well, maybe, but in increasing that concentration of CO2, which is a heat trapping gas that acts as a blanket over the atmosphere, we have also increased the average temperature on Earth. We've changed the climate. Again, since I was born, the temperature on average is around 0.9 degrees C higher this year than it was back in 1988. Going back even further to 1850, the temperature is around 1.5 degrees higher, with 2024 likely to be the hottest year ever, and with all of the 10 hottest years occurring in the last 10 years. Because of CO2 and other heat trapping gases, we have changed the climate on Earth. So 1.5 degrees warmer, that sounds fine, doesn't it? I don't like the cold, so warmer equals good, and more plant food is also good. Everyone wins. Well, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. If your body temperature is 1.5 degrees warmer, we'd say that you had a fever. You probably wouldn't feel very well. You may well need rest and time in bed. You may well need to go and see a doctor. And I'm not saying it's the same, but it is a similar story for our planet. As the climate warms, a few things happen. Rainfall changes leading to dramatic flooding in some places and dramatic droughts in others. And warmer air can hold more water vapour, which means that storms can be more intense and more impactful. Plants that may have thrived in certain places because, uh, because of the changes to temperature and rainfall may not able to survive where they traditionally have grown. That extra CO2 being no use to the plant. It means that ice around the world risks melting and retreat, which ultimately risks sea, sea level rise, coastal flooding and erosion. So a warmer planet is absolutely livable for now. 
but it means risks and uncertainty around the world going forward. And particularly for areas that are, that are already short of water, or already too hot, or already experiencing strong storms. This climate change means more risk for those places. So we are working to reduce the amount of emissions that we put into the atmosphere to achieve what we call net zero, which really means our emissions being less than, less than or equal to the amount of CO2 taken up by plants in a year. Because at the moment, the balance is off and concentrations are rising. Too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing. Imagine walking into an all-you-can-eat buffet and being told that all this food is here for you to eat. If you're anything like me, you'd have several plates of bad food, you'd overeat and you'd feel awful afterwards. But there would be plates and plates left to eat. Just because of all that food, just all that food exists doesn't mean that we should eat it or we could eat it. The fact that CO2 concentration is going up proves that it's too much for the natural world to cope with today. Plants can't eat enough of it. And in fact, some of the CO2 is dissolving in water around the world, leading to acidification, which is a nightmare for living things underwater and in, in water. So in trying to achieve net zero, we're trying to stop making things worse. But we would need to go much, much further if we're going to going to allow the planet to repair itself and come back to what it's experienced for thousands of years. If emissions stay higher than the planet can deal with, that will keep increasing the concentration of CO2 and keep the planet warming. And with a warming planet, we risk catastrophic climate change, which changes what we can grow and where we can grow it, as well as rising sea levels, increased intensity of storms, droughts, flooding. It means a very different planet. So, I am working to reduce that risk by trying to get us to burn less stuff. In the UK, that means heat pumps for heating. It means push bikes and public transport or electric vehicles for travel. Um, it means wind turbines, solar panels, big wires to our neighbours nearby. It may mean nucle new nuclear power stations. It may mean lots of storage for our power in batteries or hydro hydroelectric dams, etc. It means eating less meat. It means moving towards a mainly plant-based diet. It means trying to consume less stuff overall or minimising the footprint of what we, what we consume. That could mean secondhand, it could mean repaired, it could mean refurbished stuff rather than new. Ultimately, we have all the tools we need to rapidly decarbonise the world around us. We need to choose to do that as soon as possible if we're going to minimise the risk of climate change. So to be clear, this is not a war on plants, but trying to protect the whole ecosystem from rapid change that it didn't cause. Now, I suspect this will not be my most viewed video, but next time someone comments that CO2 is a good thing, I will be posting it in reply. You'd be welcome to do the same. As always, I'd love to hear what you think and how you feel about the changing climate. I should say I'm not a climate scientist, uh, but I read an awful lot about the, the way the climate is changing and I am a, a practitioner in decarbonisation working to respond to climate change. There will be some things that I've oversimplified or, or not got quite right in this, um, but you get the idea. Too much CO2 is, is bad for, for the atmosphere, it's bad for living things, including plant life, uh, because of the warming effect that it can have all around us.